Our first guest tonight hosts the Emmy and Peabody award-winning show last week tonight. Not a single Oscar, though. Nobody talks about that. Not even nominated. Snubbed. Yeah, snubbed. Airs Sunday nights on HBO is available to stream on HBO Max. Please welcome back to the show our friend John Oliver. How are you, John? Yeah, yeah. where's my Oscar? <laughs> yeah. I was, I was the voice of Vanity Smurf. If that's not Oscar worthy, <laughs> what is? You've done a lot of voice work and not, yeah. not a single yeah. nothing. I've been Vanity Smurf. I've been a porcupine. I've been a, a bird. Come on, that's, that's range. <laughs> that's street-like range there. Also, talking about range. I was watching a closer look then as you were doing it. Yeah. For someone who insists, oh, I don't do impressions at SNL, the way you transitioned from Kevin McCarthy to Ted yeah. Cruz to yeah. Lindsey Graham, it was like Rich Little at the Bellagio. Thank you. It was smooth. Thank so you. smooth. Uh, you know what? I, 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 I certainly am getting a, a little at the Bellagio response. <laughs> Here from my studio crew. Just, you know, I look back and I feel like uh, Lauren uh, just did not recognize my talent. And uh, I think... Yeah. Uh, were he ever to stumble upon this show, yeah, you know, if if he does what we know that won't happen. But if he is watching, it's not about it's not sounding like them. It's embodying them. That was Daniel Day Lewis doing impressions. The oh, yeah. spirit of all three men transition. I don't do impressions. Yeah, well, it's hard because you know I come home from a long day's work and I have to yes. say to my wife, Alexi, I'm Ted right now. I'm gonna need some time. I'm gonna need time to <laughs> Seth. Seth's not here yet. When, when, you're reading a, when you're reading a story to Ash, does he ever say, and now it's Kevin McCarthy? Please. Sure, <laughs> I just need 15 minutes. Though. Yeah, he prefers that. <laughs> Do Jim Jordan telling me about Curious George. Um, hey, that's, uh, that's we're... Every uh, child wants, isn't it? Do it as Jim Jordan. <laughs> I, just, I, just want, I just want this story to contextually have a very different memory for me in the future. <laughs> uh, I've complimented you time and time again uh, during this difficult year on your choice to do your show in the beautiful limbo that you're in front of now, but yet right. audiences might be waking their way back. How are you feeling about that? I mean, you know, it was, uh, it was weird to uh, be without them for <laughs> about a show and a half. Yep. And then, honestly, I've got, I have got used to it, if I'm, if I'm totally honest. I mean, I, I generally barreled through them anyway. Also, as someone who uh, did stand up for a long time, I am, I did stand up in Britain, so I am used to delivering jokes to silence. It's, almost how I'm co more comfortable. Yeah. So it, it's, the, it's the sound that I anticipate, and when it comes back, actually, I feel nothing. Yeah, well, I think that you and I are similar in that almost uh, when a joke goes too well, we think yeah. uh, collectively the audience is wrong, and we then begin to doubt ourselves. There was, I will say there are, normally the, the, the happiest you will see me in a split second is if, if a joke I've loved has just bombed. And I, th I feel like I've seen the same with you, where it, your face will kind of glow <laughs> as, you, as you send the joke that you, that you love to its inevitable death. It's just, the only thing that is, that is going to be really useful for us is that occasionally, when we occasionally do something very big, like unveil a 6,000 pound cake to antagonize, the leader of Turkmenistan. If you do that without an audience in the room, you look like a crazy person. <laughs> That's true. You guys do have that ability to go grand every once in a while, and, and yeah. certainly. And that, that, that necessitates some kind of sound of joy, not just a kind of <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, do you have, now do you know all your crew's coughs at this point? Well, I see I'm still not operating with a crew. That's so right. I, there is, the only sound I hear is my own voice echoing back at me from the wall. So I, I hear nothing. Yeah, I think I got the right, I think 10 people is about right. <laughs> Honestly, I've been doing the Edinburgh Festival for years. I perform to a lot less than 10 a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> I, can honestly, I can honestly say the first couple of years I was doing Edinburgh, when you walk up to your stage manager and if it was double figures, I was like, it's happening. It's, <laughs> this is show business. 10 separate people? My, uh, my old comedy partner and I once did a show in Chicago for nine people, and seven of them were blood relations. <laughs> <laughs> I had, I, told, I must have told you, I had 100% walkout in Edinburgh as well. Did from you really? Four people, four people, four people in the audience. So we got four in tonight. Okay, great. After about 10 minutes in, I'm doing an hour, two leave. So now I've got two people, and it's a couple, and this is where it gets sadistic. The guy gets up, says, I'm going to the toilet. I'm like... <laughs> You, you wouldn't do this to your wife. And she's looking at him going, don't, this is, a ban this is an abandonment issue. <laughs> he leaves. She, is, she stays for about 20 more minutes. And I see her hand going down to the floor. I had to pick up her bag. And I said, are you leaving? And she said, yeah. 
<laughs> and I, I will never, ever forget the sound of the door closing behind her. <laughs> I mean, that's John. They really didn't like the show because... I really didn't. I mean, for them to, like, be able to know that you knew... Yeah, I really feel for... I, I think about what she must have been going through a lot because she, she must have thought... She must have calculated there's about half an hour of this show left. This is... What I'm about to do could haunt me for the rest of my life, but it's half an hour more. I can't do it. <laughs> uh, do you have a glow about yourself? Um, uh, vaccinated, my friend? Yes, I got my first, I got, I got my first shot. So I was very, yeah, I'm very, very happy about it, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Where, now, uh, I, when, I, uh, I, when I got my first shot, yeah. the nurse was, uh, I think, a little surprised at how happy I was. The same happened that was for you. Absolutely the case for me. I, I, I went in, I was kind of shaking with excitement, and she said, How do you feel? I went, I'm really, really happy. I'm so excited about this. And she said, Why? And it kind of it, it kind of hit me a little bit odd. I think what well, you know, have you turned on the news? You know why we're all here? And then she I said, Well, I'm just excited because you know the pandemic's been really bad. And she said, Are you are you not frightened of needles? I, went, I mean, again. Again, I don't love them, but uh, it has been really bad. So <laughs> I, I still see this as a net positive. <laughs> don't I, ruin this moment for me. I, um, I remember two things uh, when I got my shot. Uh, one, I, I, got a little, uh, I got a little choked up. And, really? and, uh, and I said uh, uh, to my nurse, I'm never gonna forget your name. And the other thing is that I do not remember her name. <laughs> those, those, I remember that I forgot it. Yeah, well, that's that's the most important thing, isn't it? <laughs> I have a, it was, uh, I have it was a lot important more to, to me in the moment, and I forgot all the lessons. It feels like on, on a on a macro scale, that is what I worry about with this pandemic. That that, will, that exactly what you experienced is going to happen. That all the key lessons that that were absolutely put blindingly, unblinkingly in front of people's eyes. They go, well, well, let's make a change. Let's make a change. We we'll, we'll, we need to. We need to look at you know, environmentally how we're handling things around the world to not let a pandemic like this happen again. And it's over. And yeah, what was that? It was something to do with bats. Oh, no, no. They like grapes. Who can stay mad at them? <laughs>